Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related to the foundation level examination. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are stepping into the chapter two of the set B and here we'll be talking concepts, uh, different uh, concepts related to the uh, testing throughout the SDLC models and different levels which we have covered in the chapter two. So let's start and pick up the very first question from the chapter two. This is the question number nine. Which of the following statement about the chosen software development lifecycle is correct? Again. Again, SDLCs, we have discussed a lot that what is it in context when testing gets performed, how testing gets organized in different SDLC models. We have three different categories talking about sequential, incremental, and iteratives. So we must really understand the difference between these SDLC models and how testing gets organized in that. Now, however, in this type of question, as the context may not be really defined in the question, we have to go through the options to conclude that what could be the right answer for that. So let's see the option A. Option A says that if agile software development is used, system test automation replaces the need for regression testing. I think, see, sometimes your generic understanding about testing would also help you to conclude none of the testing, like system testing, whether it is manual or automation, whether it is sequential or agile, cannot replace the need of regression testing. The changes will take place in, top, in form of fixing a defect, probably in terms of environmental changes or many other things. And that is where the need of regression testing will always be there, irrespective of the type of development model chosen or irrespective of how much automation you're doing or even in case of what levels you're conducting. So A is not the right answer. However, the option B says, in a, if a sequential development model is used, then the dynamic testing is typically restricted to later in the life cycle. Yes, when it comes to sequential, we know that uh, dynamic testing is conducted once for all at the end, and we have discussed that as a part of tutorial in more detail. So initially, we try to be as uh, static as possible, and until unless the entire code is implemented, we do not kickstart with the dynamic testing. So it happens once for all at the end in the life cycle once the development gets completed. So it looks very good option, but let's cross check with C. C says, uh, if an iterative development model is used, then component testing is typically performed manually by developers. Iterative model, you're talking about agile, you're talking about spiral, where we work in tight timelines and repetitions are involved. That means the same code will be redefined, redefined every single iteration. And talking about manual testing is not a scope. In iterative models, we prefer to achieve as much automation as possible so that we can save some of our time. And that again makes it a little invalid option to be picked up as the right answer. So let's go with option D. Option D says in an incremental development model, uh, if an increment development model is used, then static testing is done in early increments and dynamic testing in later increments. Mind the word increments here. As we talk about increments, we are talking about every single sprint or every single iteration because it is an incremental model. And every single sprint, you know that, you conduct the required amount of static testing and you do conduct the required amount of dynamic testing because every single increment is one way a representation to the business that what we have achieved in this particular sprint so all the work be it design development static dynamic everything will be conducted when we present this work to the business and that's where every single increment will have it and it's not about in the later increments or early increments that means the early sprints and later sprints. Every single sprint will have static and dynamic being conducted and it is not a discrimination. So with that particular context, putting up all together, the right answer for this particular question is B, if a sequential model development is used, then the dynamic testing is typically restricted to later in the life cycle is only the right answer with respect to the SDLC model chosen in this particular options. So that's how you make your conclusions. Let's go to the next question, the question number 10. And the question number 10 is talking about which of the following is a good testing practice that applies to all SDLC lifecycle. We remember the four golden rules which uh, gets applied to any development model. That is for every development activity, there should be a corresponding testing activity. Every test level must have an objective specific to that level. And then 
The analysis and design are the activities which can start with corresponding development activity and testers should be involved in reviewing the draft as soon as possible. Now let's look at the option. Option A says, uh, testers should review the work product as a part of the next development phase. And no, that's not one of the four characteristics. B, testers should review work product as soon as drafts are available. Yes, bingo, that's perfectly uh, in line with the four characteristics we just listed to you. C, C says, testers should review work products before test analysis and design uh, begins. No, not at all, because uh, that's the activity where we analyze. Analyze one way means static testing or reviewing. So by going through the documentation, you also review them for any kind of anomaly. And that is where it perfectly gets into the activity. And uh, this is just like trying to blend you with uh, thinking that C is the right answer, because we told you one of the characteristics is also to analyze and uh, conduct the design activity uh, in the uh, early phases of the life cycle during the corresponding development activity, right? So this is how they will trick you around as a part of uh, the options given to you. So C is not the right answer, okay? Because it's it's not that it happens as a part of it. And uh, not, not before, it's a part of it. So D, testers should review work products immediately after they are published. See, published is basically more of like uh, finalized document. So publish could be a tricky word here. Some people may say that when it is made available to us, some people may say that is it about finalization. So in that context, you should compare B and D, like which is making more sense, okay, which is the best option. Because published, you may have different meaning in, internally within the organization. But uh, in technical words, published simply means that making it open to all, right, which is like, hey, this is finalized and good to go ahead and make use of. So published would be too late for us because draft is not about publishing. Draft is always about editing, right? So that is how we should compare it and say, oh, publish is more of like finalized. So in that context put together, the right answer for this particular question is, B, tester should review a work product as soon as the first drafts are available in the life cycle in order to get started early and to follow the characteristics of good testing in any development model okay so that's pretty much how exactly you tackle with some of the key situations and tricky options much better way so let's go to the next question the next question we have is question number 11 and this is a pretty straightforward question it says uh, which of the following is an example of test first approach to development i think if you remember this uh, had three topics to talk about test driven development uh, acceptance test driven development and behavior driven development so all we have to search is this into the options. The options are very straightforward. We have test-driven development, coverage-driven development, quality-driven development, and feature-driven development. So some of you may come back and tell me that, yes, Raja, you know, we do have D, uh, feature-driven development itself, and design-driven development. Why not? Why not? But here we are not talking about the test being created. The question is about test-first approach. And test-first approach specifically talks about that tests are created before coding. When you talk about feature-driven development and design-driven development, they are a different concept, context altogether. Feature-driven is the requirement approach. That means code is written based on the requirement. Same way design-driven development means code is written based on design. And test-driven development means code is written based on the test cases. So I think that makes it very simple and very straightforward. The right answer to this particular question is, a, that is test-driven development, is one of the examples in the given options that what is test-first approach. So put together, these are the type of questions which you can expect. Sometimes it's very easy to get confused. So I'm also including the confusions in our discussion so that if anyone out of thousands of people watching this video may feel that, okay, this is what my confusion is. What about that? So I'm also trying to include the possible confusions, what people can have, just to make sure that you have a perfect learning from this particular playlist all right so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understand the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning